I've written up my starting eleven down, and there are question marks all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, even in writing it down, I've not been definitive. There are some, you know, it's an eleven man team. I've got fourteen names written down here. <laughs> Do you know what? I have got nothing more to speculate on Sunday. So why don't we jump straight to the predicted eleven? Um, so there we go. And also, Harvey's helped us out here. Rouse presser is tomorrow. So we've done that. We've done the preview on the wrong day. It's happened again. There we go. That's fine. This is pure gut feeling as it always is on this channel. I hear rumours that Ralph watches this and then he does his presser. Right. I imagine he writes notes on this Absolutely. to tell the press. Right. I okay. just send him my notes. I just I just uh, fax, I fax it to him. We've got a fax machine. At the Maybe end. that's that the works, problem. So. Maybe the, because this channel is pure gut instinct. And if that's what Ralph's going on, then um, then really that's not that's a bit of work. Anyway, anyway, let's jump straight into... Our predicted 11. In fact, Jack, I'm going to let you do this. Wow. You are actually going to be able to do this. Well, I think... Go, I'm still I'm still picking Frazier. Yeah? So still, still putting Forster in. I know that after the game, I was I was worried about the communication in the back line, and I did think that, okay, is that a, is that, is that a McCarthy thing? Is that a Foster thing? But I think I'm just... I'm just it was the fallout of the match where I'm just trying to find excuses. So mm -hmm. in my mind, I would still stick with Forster. Especially because he's not conceded in this cup. I mean, it is in this cup run that he's, you know, he did it. He's exiled. Yeah. So I would stick with all the fours and goal. I think all the, the wings, fours. All, the, all the fours, fullbacks. I think you still stick with Ryan and Kyle Walker Peters. Yeah. I think that okay. doesn't change. You know, if Kyle Walker Peters has had his first bad game for us. Really, let's let's be honest. That's what that was. Yeah. He's had he's had games where he's not not you know maybe not shown up. But he's not been terrible. He's not been the worst player on the pitch. I think that against. You know, West Brom, he was really running into trouble and just mm -hmm. sort of found out a little bit. Yeah. It's then in the middle that I'm slightly questioning things. Really? Okay. Yeah. Because... Who? Who in particular? I think Vestergaard. What will start? No. I think Salah we'll will start. But no... They... Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Right. <laughs> I thought there was a real lack of pace in our back line and going back, getting back, back in the formation and covering up, everyone was so slow and I think they looked tired. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think, the guy that had concrete boots on. He game. really, he really did. Mm. And Salasu just has a bit more pace to him. Okay. I just, I, I just think it, it'd be the better option. And I don't, I, Vestergaard, you've got the, you know, uh, put him on the left side. Yeah. Salasu. <laughs> yeah. Salasu, I put him on the left side. I just think, from what we've what we've seen in the past few games, I just think might be the might just might be the right option for us. I think I, like Bednarak didn't have a great game either, but Bednarak for me has done enough this season and been consistent the most with yeah. it all that you know I would stick with him. Okay. Yeah, I just it, it's it's hard because I don't like in reality I feel like Bednarak and Vestergaard have been as out of form as each other, but it's yeah. just who would I keep in just out of the two. Okay. So that's probably what I do. Um, I don't know if Salas is on the left or the right. I'm, he, he's, he's, I can't remember what well, he's, play, he's on. played left back before, hasn't he? So I'm guessing he, he'd be put on the left. Just as a point of contention, I, I don't disagree that this isn't a great idea. I just have a feeling Ralph will go with Vestergaard. Oh, I've got. Uh, here's the thing. I've got no doubts that that, that he will go with Vestergaard because ex experience proven. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Just for the way the game has been, especially when. Especially when we look at the last Leicester game, you know, I watched a few of the highlights earlier on. And there was a real lack of, you know, the the we failed to press and we allowed them a lot of room to move in the middle mm -hmm. of the air, in the middle of the box. And War Prowse was const was was quite far back. If you look like, and it was the last time we played them, it was, it was Diallo started that game as well. Um, mm -hmm. They just weren't fast enough to get back into mid into the midfield and, you know, sort that out. So I just, I just think a bit more pace on the pitch would would, would help us. Right. Okay. But yeah. at, at the same time, that's why in the middle I'm going James Ball Prowse and Stuart Armstrong. Oh, so th th this isn't a predicted eleven. This is the eleven we want. Oh, mate, yeah, I'm going this. You, I've sat, I've sat day all day looking at this, thinking what what would I do and what do I want? And you I did. think Prowse in, in number six here. Yeah, Prowse at number six, and you know Armstrong is slightly, slightly forward. Purely because I, I I agree. I think experience is what we need. And with, if I'm starting Salasso in that position, I want the experience in front of him. Yeah. Okay. So 
and I think Ward Prowse and Armstrong have to decide between the two of them, or you know, Ralph has to decide who's playing that number six because they need a sticker that number six mm. and do Romeo's job. Yep. They can't like it, it, there's not there's not no room to change that. That's the job that needs to be done. And I think Diallo is a bit too is, is too inexperienced a little bit, but you know, in, in in this past few games, it does just feel like that's you know that's where it's been won and lost. Really, is in the middle of the park. Agreed. Yeah. And I just think you know the passing game, just a, just a, a level more level head. I think that's the that, that for me, that's what I would do. That's okay, what I would do. And then I hate this. This is um yeah. And then on the wings, I'd have Nathan Redman and Gineppo. Oh, Starman Mate. on the right. Yeah, man, of course. You know, it's yeah. uh, this is a. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm sure people don't don't want to might not agree with what I'm what I'm putting out here, but this is what I want. <laughs> 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 I just think Gineppo's performance. I I even put it out on our, on the Instagram this week. You know, how much does she, do uh, Shay and Gineppo deserve to play? And it was overwhelming that everyone just agreed. Yeah, yeah. they've been. They were so good. They were they were the, sh- the shining lights of when we were playing badly. You know, they we were like you know they were doing they were starting to progress. Yeah, and then injury then the injury sort of freed up a little bit, and now they've been dropped, and they're not you know the replacements haven't been as good really. So I would start Gineppo and Redman. No, and top- well, well look at what happened on on Monday night. You know, Gineppo. I mean, it was such a sh- stupid substitution time wise. It's like you put him on at like eighty six minute played or something like that. Yeah, and instantly problems that Gineppo made and he's just one of those difficult players those awkward players who you know he had a great game against Chelsea when we got that 1-1 draw you know we're, we're you know we're hard part not to actually get three points out of that game you know could have quite easily done so we didn't concede from open play mm-hmm. and he was he was he was playing him right back so yeah. um I just think absolutely right he's, he's just one of those players that causes teams headaches and sort of Gives them, you know, when when you look at the, the, the shining, like some of the best moments, sort of like in the it's during the you know after Christmas, after you know when we've been poor, mm. it's been players running at people, like when te- when Nathan Teller was running at people and like, getting fouls and penalties. Like we need that. We need someone who's wiry, going to run at people, just yeah. cause a bit of havoc, and that's kind of what I want in that position. Mm-hmm. And I, I just think theo's not been offering that theo's kind of just does what redmond's been doing he, you know he feels like a good backup an all right backup for redmond yeah yeah and i'd rather have him on, the, on you know coming on now the other part of me does did think what about minamino well but he, but he can't play can he <laughs> so that for it right out the window no he's, he's kind of tired i think yeah but um i don't i really don't from the, from the sounds of it and the looks of it i don't think he's in the plans for our future the more, no. the more, the more kicks on. I don't think is. but anyway, back to the team, and then it's up top. Ings and Shea. Ings and Shea. Got to be. You, how, how can you not start Shea? I know, right? You know, I, again, you know, he, he, it was unfortunate that he didn't uh, get that goal against uh, Burnley. You know, mm-hmm. where, where at that position he was in, but he was on. He's been on fire. Yeah. You know, for the past past few weeks, and I've, to be honest, I've missed him when he when he hasn't been playing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's you know it tells you just how far we've come from Shea Adams. You know, even at the beginning of the season, it just seems to be like <laughs> the way Shea goes. It's hard to get on with at the beginning, and then you can't really see why the team why, why he shouldn't start. <laughs> yeah, and we we said it in the uh, in in the post match. Uh, well, actually, the the chat section called it out in the post match. It was like, what has Shea Adams done to to find himself on the bench? And it was Walcott got fit. Yeah, and it's. And you know the the display that we saw on Monday night was just horrendous. Um, yeah, it was just so bad. And you know, let's face it, there were quite a few mistakes in in that Burnley game as well. So um, I like I like that, this that you, team though. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the mistakes in that game is just dire. Like our passing has been terrible. Mm. You mix that passing with not like not, not pressing at all. Like the press has been so bad for a team that you know that's our one thing. We're doing it poorly. Yeah. Like there's just no communication. The players aren't, you know, close to anyone. And then it, it, it's been really confusing when you see like the midfield press and then you know Bednarak and Vestergaard that seem to be in between players, completely right. allowing people to go in between. It, it it's been really aggravating, and that's why I kind of changed up from Vestergaard. Now I know that Vestergaard didn't play in the last Leicester game. Mm-hmm. I don't think I think he was still out by then. That's right. So yeah. so maybe so you know maybe this you know I, I, I think he probably will start. So I'm not 
going to be upset if he does. Okay. But for, but for me, this is kind of this is what I would do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a really difficult one in that midfield because let's face it, we haven't seen a confident performance in midfield for months. Not since yeah. Romeo got injured in that in that Leeds game when we were playing in the sandpit. It was. You know, we, we haven't seen that control, that <laughs> that lack of chaos, uh, mm. for want of a better word. I mean, it's just been absolute madness in the middle of the park ever since he's been off. And I, I, I like Diallo. I think he's a great player. I just don't think he's an out-and-out out number six. I don't think yeah. he, he offers, uh, you know, the defensive capabilities that, that a Romeo or, a, dare I say, a Hoybier did. You know, it's just he's just not one of those players that sort yeah. of gets in the way yeah he's he the, the, like you can clearly see there's a, there's a decent player in Diallo but mm. I think it is more in that attacking midfield role it's probably you know it's he's a good sub for you know somehow you know bionic James Ward Prowse can't play a game you know he mm. you know that I feel like that'd be the way to go but I, I think this th- this kind of change you know I think Armstrong you just want you want that secure passing and just you want that level head and that experience in the middle and although it's not his natural position i know he'll he knows how to do a job mm. <laughs> and so yeah. does war prowse war prowse can defend really really well the problem would be if war prowse has to defend and he tries to then he also has to try and play the ball and be that you know you know that man that's looking forward trying to make the play play go on that's not you know yeah. romeo's job is get the ball you know, win the ball back, be defensive, and then pass it to the guy who's going to start the, the attack. Mm-hmm. With with James Will Prowse playing so far back and Diallo trying to do that, they're both trying to do the same sort of thing, both not succeeding, and then going forward, they're too far back. Like it's just, just the, the, for me, it's just not a partnership that works. Where it's not, it? but in the same regard, you've got to be careful that you know the same thing doesn't happen with with James Will Prowse and Armstrong doing it exactly that. I, that's um, what I mean. I think, but I think that the 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 maturity of and the experience of Armstrong is better set for him to play in that position because we have seen him play in that position. Right. I just feel like with with Diallo there in the middle, War Prowse is also making up for him a little bit. Mm. Whereas if you got Armstrong there, he knows like I don't have to make up for Armstrong. Armstrong's a, one of the you know one of the, the starting players. He knows how to do this job. You know, you don't have to explain it. He's a lawyer. He is a lawyer. You don't have to explain it to him. <laughs> Like, just let him do his. Just let him do his thing. Yep. Oh man, get the itching dancing in that. Just, it's just not... once though, every so often. He's a liar. He is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we want. Yeah, that's absolutely. What we, that's what we want. And and also, you know, looking at the the formation going forward, you know, quite often we see sort of a three man attack. You know, would that be that would be Redmond getting involved, and maybe we will see Redmond sort of crossing over with Gineppo and. I've seen a bit more of this uh, this happening, you know, sort of switching up sides. But big question marks, though, isn't it? It this, is. At like, this okay, position here. Like, you know, we, we, when we get to the game on Sunday, I don't expect the team to look look like this. Maybe the front. No. Maybe, maybe, I may, like, I think he, I think he'll start Redmond, Ings, Shea. And I really hope he starts Jeanette Bowe. I'm like, worried, though, he's not. It's just... Do you know what? I, I think he's going to do that. I think he's... I think he's going to play Diallo. Mm-hmm. Let's imagine Armstrong's Diallo for a second. No, actually, sorry. Let's imagine Gineppo's Diallo because I don't think he's going to start Gineppo. I've got this horrible feeling. Um, effectively, he'll do this. He'll put Diallo in here. Well, yeah. That, I mean, that's that's what we uh, that's what we that's what we've come to know. And Vestergaard here. That's that's <laughs> kind of what. Yeah, I mean that is that more likely that is the team that we are going to see, you know. But I'm hoping that maybe a little tweak to the system because one of the, one of the other comments I got a lot, we got a lot we got on Instagram was I hope Ralph changed the tactics. It's like, well, he's not going to change the tactics, but no. he can. But he can rotate the squad and like correct the squad. Mm. We can all see where there were corrections need to be made. Like the difference Gineppo made when he came on the pitch. Oh, massive! Massive. And the form he was in before, you know, we all that. Shea, the, the form that he's been in, you know, anyway, and that, you know, we need to attack when, you know, it's in reality, Southampton, a team right now, which in, in a lot like Leeds, in a sense, it's we've got to score goals to win. Yeah. Because we're going to, like, we're going to concede, but we need, so we need to score. <laughs> Doesn't matter yeah. how many times we rotate this back for, 
there's a good chance we're going to concede, especially you know the fact they've got. I think Madison. Like they, they. I think that is that. Are there is their little ban up now? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Think. I think that. I think they're they're uh, punished players that are coming back. Oh no, you didn't have to go and play at West Ham's. It's just like what kind of a punishment is that? It's ridiculous. It's, it's not a punishment, is it? Yeah. I mean, it, it didn't even get fined. Apparently, should, should have come down harder on that. But then, then again, I'm watching. You know, Arsenal versus Sparta Prague, and you know, if, I'm, if we're talking about bans, mm, yeah, <laughs> ten That's... games is not enough. Oh, and then no. there seems to be a slight punch up on the pitch. Or someone's getting a, a big card. Or not. It's a yellow. It looked like a big rough big, big rough challenge. So I was saying to Mike <laughs> just before we went on, this is the only time I've ever wanted Arsenal to like win a game and win it well because yeah, screw Prague. Yeah. So yeah. For, for one not, night only, c- not come, good to come, see. come on Arsenal. Yeah, they're having a good fun, After good that, fun really Arsenal fan TV tonight. It's uh, all kicking off. Do you know what, though? Looking at this this team lineup, though, I just really worry he's going to start Walcott. Yeah, um, because be the problem. problem that gives us is if he starts, if he starts walk, can you imagine this? He goes with the same team that played on Monday night. I think if he if he if he did that, because did he have Redmond up front? Was Redmond up front? It was that weird thing of like it was. Redman and Redman, well, Redman and Theo. Really, it was that yeah. like, interchangeable. Like they, they don't do anything. They do the same job, but none of them. Like it's yeah. they're too similar of player. And I think you know there, there's there are times when when it you know it's like when it was uh, Ings, Adams, and Theo. Theo yeah. was trying to play in those forward, you know, those advancing positions, meaning there was a huge gap in the middle of the, like in the in the midfield. Yeah, and I, you know, I think Redman. Feeding that ball in works really, really well. Yeah, and then you know, look, look, look how, like he has been a few games. He's on the like he's he's on the end of shots now. He's, he's doing like I think he playing slightly. He's still a, a, an attacking player, but playing just a little bit deeper to feed through the you know the two going forward. I mean, he's still very much a part of that attacking three, but he's you know that deep line, deep, deep line player. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well. That is pretty much. Let us know in the in the chat section exactly what you think about that um, that lineup. Let me have a few of the comments here. Uh, there's <laughs> same one though. For, there's no way he goes to the same eleven. Surely, if he, if he goes for that same eleven, and we get knocked out, there will be hell to exodus. pay. Exodus. There will be exodus, and we're just gonna have to sit here and be like, right. I know how I, I know how I feel about it, but I can't. Um, there's no. I can't argue for this <laughs> right now. <laughs> I can't. I can't help you there. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the, the most quiet I'll have, I'll have to be in one of these videos. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a rough watch um, if he does that. Uh, Ralph might start Salasu just in front of the back too. Well, maybe, maybe what in the sort of number six number six position. I think it was a Salasu though. He's he was kind of touted to be like this super wonder kid that you know someone who Liverpool's going to buy in two years time. But we we haven't really had a chance to see what he can do, really. Um, only a little bit here and there, so bit of a mystery. Um, but these are the sort of games where maybe it's time to just I don't know, maybe not maybe it's not time to run a dice. But you know, I've, I, I I agree. I think that, that this is there's a time and a place where we need to start playing him, mm-hmm. and the money that we spent on him and the things that were said about him when he got to the club, I I completely let him off that there was that injury, like. And we, there's a reason we didn't see him for so long, and I'm completely fine with that. But now he is fit. I just wish I could see more of him, especially when the back four has been communicating like they have and have been as slow as they have. Yeah, you sort of yeah. saw him with pace. So yeah, that's why. That, that's I just that's why I want to see him. Yeah, uh, coming here from Dex. Asm has to start. I don't know what Ralph was thinking. You can't drop one player for missing one big chance. Yeah, I guess you're referring to that one on one with a keeper. In that in that Burnley game, when the game was you know pretty close to the final stages, and the, the previous games he had the ball in the back of the net, so yeah, I'd be surprised if he got dropped just for that. I, I just think it's you know Theo's come back, and uh, and uh, yeah, and that's just what happened really. Yeah. Uh, Say one nine four comment here. Vesco is so important if we want to beat their press. Yeah, it's a good thought there. Yeah, you're not you're not wrong. It's I still I still, but that's the thing though. If, with their press and the way that the way they, they do stuff, I just don't think he might. It's not quite quick enough. Mm. You know, um, and yeah, you're, you're absolutely right there. The big diagonal balls will, will, would be a loss. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. There were a couple of horrendous ones against West Brom on Monday night. Yeah, that's the thing as well, though. Like, <laughs> there are moments. That, that, that's the really annoying thing of there are moments to play the ball out from the back, and there are moments to knock that ball forward, and they just keep making the wrong yeah. decision at the wrong time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I thought we were playing rugby in some of those kicks. Up the oh, pitch. yeah, it's absolutely horrendous. Um, <laughs> got Chris on the show already. So who's the eye candy? That would be the the man below me in the screen down there. There we go. I mean, I've got a haircut now, so you know. I'm, not, I'll get, look, I'm not looking. I'll go for my, my uh, haircut tomorrow. So are you uh, excited? Oh, I'm gonna be so I'm gonna be about a stone lighter with all this stuff coming off. So um, some of the dudes, like I've seen some blokes getting absolutely pampered in the Turkish barbers next door to my place. They are. <laughs> I think we've I think we've all been waiting. I know my boss was like, hasn't shaved. He's like, I was gonna. I've let waiting for them. I think everyone's getting fully pampered. I loved it. I almost fell asleep in the chair. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. Well, there we go. That is our predicted eleven for the kickoff on Sunday evening. Um, this is this. I guess we've left it as what we think Ralph will go with. Yeah, this is what I think it'll hit. What think what this is what well, I think he'll go with. But what we hope is that actually we go with Armstrong and James Will Prowse in the middle, and we have Gineppo starting, and maybe Salasu in the Vestergaard. But I think that comment earlier, sort of that that diagonal ball to Carl Walker Peters, could be one that we'll be looking at. Um, all I'll say, guys, is if if if, if the weekend goes terrible. And it all goes bad, but you think that my squad was better. Let's not hashtag Ralph out. Hashtag Jack in. Yeah, yeah. Always, always the positive. Positive. Absolutely. Hashtag yeah. Jack in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you know, you bring up an excellent point. If if stuff goes wrong on if it goes wrong on Sunday, yikes! It's such an important game to us. And like, here's the thing: if we go out and we play well, and it's like, damn, we we just lost to the better team on that day. But, you know, we, we gave it something. That's one thing. But mm. if it's like West Brom, because <sighs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want to say it, but it is Leicester. And I was at that game and I know what, what they can do when they want to punish us. Yep. Yep. So yep. now's not now's not the time <laughs> to, do, to be an idiot. No, indeed. Right. There we go.